January the 29th. Dear Diary, This morning was much like any other morning, and when I took my usual walk, I had no idea that on this day I was destined to find the girl of my dreams. Well... <laughs> I suppose the whole thing was my fault. I was just a lonesome bachelor searching for my idea. Oh, dear. <laughs> ah, yes. I'm quite impulsive by nature. And yet I can't say I was unhappy as a bachelor. Though at times, I felt I was missing something. Help! Help! Save me! Oh, darn. My technique was simple. I swept her off her feet. My search was over. At last, I'd found my dream girl. Took her to the latest movies. Just two crazy kids. We dine at the best places. I took her to my favorite spot. And she took me to hers. And when I could resist her no longer, I kissed her. Ah, I knew I was winning her over. I was invited to meet the family. Donald? Meet my brothers. <laughs> and this is my mother. Hey, what's the name? Donald Duck, Mom. Hmm. And this is Daddy. Ah, yes. They were my kind of people. I knew the time was now to pop the question. Ah, tonight's the night. Here comes Rainbow. Rainbow shall come back to school next year. I am home. Be down as soon as I powder my nose, dreamer. Alone at last. The stage was all set for my big moment. At last, my dreams had come true. Her family didn't feel they'd lost a daughter, but had gained a son. Goodbye, Daisy. She helped plan our honeymoon. Them. Uh, she was loyal. Uh, she was sensitive. <gasps> and had a wonderful sense of value. Hmm. We drove directly to our dream cottage. Alone at last. With the honeymoon over, we settled down to domestic life and got to know each other uh, better. What's the matter? I'll never forget that first evening when I return home.
she had prepared my favorite dish. Dinner, sir. And how surprised I was to see her family. After a hearty meal, I went for my favorite chat. The garbage buster. I began to notice a change in Daisy. What had happened to this beautiful thing between us? Was this the wedded bliss I dreamed of? I was losing my identity. I had become a, a robot. Cut the grass. Wash the dishes. Beat the rug. Pick up the cat. Donald, Donald, dreamer boy, wake up. <laughs> Dear diary, it was a narrow escape. Though I was born when I kissed her, I died when we parted. But I lived for a little while. should start immediately sharing the responsibility for the child's upbringing. Baby visits grandma. Huh? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. father sometimes doubts he will get through this trying period, the average man usually does, and even looks back with fond memories on such things as baby's first tooth, baby's first step, and baby's first word. Such things past, father feels at last he's earned his Sunday morning snooze. Oh, it's mine. I had it Give first. Give it back. I'll kill my father. What's the matter with that kid of yours? My kid? Yes, yours! Mine ain't it free! Oh, yeah? Yeah! George, come in and let the children...
children play. After a hard day at the office, the tired father wends his weary way homeward. Junior! Daddy! Oof! What you bring? <laughs> Bang! Ow! The child craves the companionship of his father. There we are. I don't like it. Ooh! Whoopee! Right up the Let her pop! Yippee! <laughs> oh, poor horsey break a leg. Uh huh. Wow! Playtime over, the tired father relaxes, knowing that his well-mannered child will respect dad's leisure time mm. and allow father to read the news and smoke his favorite pipe. Junior, you keep your hands off my pipe. All right, Daddy. Play football, Daddy? No. Play cowboy Indian, Daddy? No. One please, soldier. I said no. Wow. Junior, pick all those toys up. No. What? Didn't Daddy tell you to pick up your toys? Uh-huh. Well, pick them up then. No. The adult mind must cope with childish innocence and with superior intellect and ingenuity convince the child to obey. Uh-huh. Now, Junior, don't you pick up a single solitary one of those toys. All right, I won't. That's a good boy. Pick up your toys! No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! <laughs> George, stop growling at the boy. I'm not growling. You'll get nowhere arguing at his level. But he deliberately said... Oh, for heaven's sakes, use a little psychology. <laughs> Is that fun, Daddy? Huh? I'll help you, Daddy. Ah, yes, father and son working as a cooperative team. There now. Wasn't that a lot of fun? Yes, Daddy. Wow! <laughs> Pretty funny. All right, Junior, time for bed. All right, Mommy. I'll teach that kid a thing or two. Where'd he go? Junior! Here I am, Daddy. Now, look here, young man. I'm going to not... Good night, Daddy. Well, what do you know? Look at that. Oh, well. Kids, they're wonderful. I ah, wish I had a million of them. George, how does this look? <gasps>
got the sweetest disposition. One guess, guess who? Who never, never starts an argument? Who never shows a bit of temperament? Who's never wrong but always right? Who never dream of starting a fight? Who gets stuck with all the bad luck? No one but Donald Duck. Yeah. <laughs> 
spring, loveliest time of the year. Oh, let us away to skip and play, for the spirit of spring is here. Awake, awake to its fairy ring. Hark, let's respond to the call of spring. more fragrant among all things than the smell of trees in the early spring. <laughs> ah, merrily pipes the bluebird, happy troubadour of spring. They frisk and play. Here's to springtime any day. Spring, spring, spring. Wonderful, wonderful spring time. Hurry, lest thou be late to thy prearranged fate. Oh, spin, spin, spin with. 
without questioning Spin by cloak for evolutioning Hang a hang in suspended animation Till comes the call for automation Gentle springtime rain, floating earthward once again. Soft, misty dew from clouds on high, a moistening link twixt earth and sky to drink thy freshness, never fail. All hail to springtime, hail, hail, hail! O oh, gentle showers, thou art God. How sad to see thy ebb. Sprague's happy spirit, thou pipes his birth. Let us rejoice again. Oh, dance to springtime's joyous calling, and trance a bit sweet dewdrops falling. Leap high in air amidst the breezes. Oh, happy time, joy never ceases. <laughs> Just a 
an old teapot. Who's an old teapot? Who said that? I did. Oh. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> Go away, dog. Go away. Scram. Well, what do you want? Nothing. I was... Uh, nothing? Man, if you don't want nothing, don't rub us magic lamps. A magic lamp? Yes, sir, boss. Anything you says... I does it. Hey, can you build a doghouse? A doghouse? Is you referring to a kennel for a canine beast? Yeah, for Pluto. Production is commencing. Yeah, I go. Out of my way. Hallelujah. Yeah, man. Yes, sir, 
up on the table. And roll flat. Roll flat? Okay, you in the balls. Force the blooming hulk right through the neck of the bottle. Shake the contents well and pour into a greased pan. Break in two eggs and beat with... A right to the jaw, or show champ, the Africa, and he's bloody. Put on a chic little hat. Mm. Pour in the molasses. Now, stir the ingredients with... Two spades and three clubs. Mm. Mix in with raspberry gelatin and freeze. Now, cut into thin slices. Donald Duck. Pretty, ain't it? But more about that later. I live next door. Ain't quite so elegant, but it's comfy. But come on in and set a spell, and let me tell you a story. Me and my boy was batching it, and one evening, as I was preparing the evening meal... Dinner's ready, son. Come and get it. <laughs> now don't get impatient. Mmm, mmm. Got something good tonight. Beans. <laughs> Bet you can't hardly wait. <laughs> huh? Hmm. Never satisfied. Oh, something's got to be done about that boy. Looks mighty pretty, don't it, son? Yep. Ain't it a pity we don't all live in a pretty backyard. But that's just part of growing up, boy. Being dissatisfied with home vittles. You know, the grass always looks greener on the other side of the fence. Ah, check, 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 check. Ah, check, 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 check. Come on, you grower. Oh, grower. Oh, yes, sir. A land of plenty. But it ain't. Not for us beetles, anyway. <laughs> uh, I'll never forget. I had to learn the hard way. I'd been eyeing that pasture for a long time. So, what was there to do but go and have a look-see? It was a paradise, all right. Just full of fancy foods.
Yep. <laughs> I was having my fill, all right. But unknown to me at the time, trouble was on its way. Oh. Ah! Watch the door, dear. No way out, so I pulled back and nailed him with my right. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Must have got him right on the button. be back in my own backyard. Home never looked so good. And do you know what I'm a thinking? I just wonder if beans is such bad vittles after all. Dessert, Sonny. Watermelon.
feeling okay? That was a little palsy wellsy. <laughs> Are you all set? All right, do your stuff. me will burn.
wolf up, Wilbur. Cough him up. Rocket. Hey. Hey, come back here. Go. Hoppers in the weeds. <laughs> no, but not like Wilbur. Wilbur. Gosh, Wilbur, I thought you was a goner. Thank <laughs> you. 
Confidentially, neither have we. But it seems that long ago, these little creatures were plentiful. But because of an inborn love for travel and adventure, the boodle beetle is now a rare little bug. The bug collector, or <clears throat> the entomologist, regards this little bug as a prize for his collection. Going somewhere, Sonny? Well, I wouldn't be in too much of a hurry if I were you. There's danger lurking out in them woods, and you're just setting yourself for a heap of trouble. You know, there's not many of us boodles left, and it's just because too many of them have set out across that stream and never come back. And here you go a setting your cap for the same medicine. Sit down, Sonny, and let me tell you a story. When I was a young pup, and full of vinegar, <laughs> just like yourself. I had ideas of adventure, too. So, I packed my bag and said goodbye to my home. <laughs> I'm a little funny about this sentimental stuff. And set out for what was gonna be the doggondest adventure. 
I'll have to admit it was pretty fascinating at first. Anything like this hat? Uh oh, what's this? Big tall things that disappear in the sky. Phew! A bug sure has to be careful when he's out looking for adventure. But unknown to me at the time, there was lurking in the forest a horrible monster. What's that now? Why, why? Let's not talk about that. Huh? Oh, sorry. I give up. Well, I guess I must have walked hundreds of miles that first day. I was just picking them up and laying them down. I just didn't feel up to it. So I thought I'd lay down for a little shut-eye and tackle it in the morning. Well, suddenly, I had the feeling I wasn't alone. And there, on top of the mountain, I saw a most amazing thing. Well, being a curious little fellow, I decided to investigate. And there it was. A horrible monster, millions of feet high. I sneaked out to get a better look, and suddenly, it moved. What? I looked again. Two hideous eyes glared at me. A bigger. That's him! Hurrah! I can't get back in again! <laughs> Come on, Snowflake. That's got much of the time. <laughs> oh, there you go, Trigger, you swamp. You're gonna get away from us again, Lord. Oh, there you go, Trigger, you brat! Oh, So, there I was, headed for I don't know what. It was simply terrifying. I tried again and again to escape, but it was no use. If only I had listened to Mama. Just think of it! The famous Professor Duck! Oh, boy. I had just one more duck. Now what? <laughs> the door opened, and there he was. Suddenly, I realized that this was my last chance. It was now or never. It's done! little bug. And do you think I cared what folks thought about the sentimental stuff? <laughs> no siree. So you see, Sonny, home isn't such a bad place after all. <laughs> uh, I was just thinking. For all I know, that monster may be looking for me yet. Who's got 
got the sweetest disposition. One guess, guess who? Who never, never starts an argument? Who never shows a bit of temperament? Who never dream of starting a fight? Who gets stuck with all the bad luck? No one but Donald Duck. What wouldst thou drink to quench thy burning thirst? <laughs> Give me a double ice cream soda. Thy wish is my command. <laughs> hey! Hey! It's gone! <laughs> So it is. Wouldst have another? Yeah, but, but, but I... Uh, but... Hey! Four more? Thou art indeed thirsty, my friend. Something's wrong here. I'm getting out of this place. Ow! Uh-huh. The fee. Thou owest me six bucks. I won't pay a thing. <laughs> Not one clip joint. <laughs> thou shalt not break any. Thou shalt thou.
you'll never learn anything, will you? Now watch. I'll show you how to do it. Like this. See? Now you try it. That's it. Swell. But remember, whatever happens, don't
Salt en peperwater. Sta klaar. Iedereen doet mee aan deze grote klassieke haten. En dat is mijn recept voor gebraden eend. Ja, ik ben. 
Laat me met rust. Blijf me wel. Kom niet dichterbij. Nog even stappen. En ik ga gillen. Cause if you was, I'd get the drop on you. <laughs> and drill you right between the eyes. <laughs> Roadhog. Anybody home? 
Six guns dropped them in their tracks. Here he comes now! Hooray! Howdy, folks. Eh, toughest Kaluta I ever seen. Oh, me? Really? Made old Pete pull leather. No <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Tossed him like a blowpipe heifer. Yeah. No, siree. Pete'll pull out of these parts for sure. <laughs> Pete's a coming. Pete? Pete who? Oh, oh, Pete. Double sarsaparilla float. <laughs> Hello, ugly.
morning, sir.
Oh, <laughs> 
with its excitement, its pageantry, its color, its enthusiastic fans. Crowds fill the arena to overflowing to see the ferocious bull matched against the courage and skill of that national hero, the Matador. But all of this means very little to the tourista, or tourist, who knows nothing of matadors and brave bulls. Ay, 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 ay! Hey, amigos, come, come see mucho loco americano. Shoo, shoo, bossy, shoo! Stop it, sí, sí, sí. americano que va hacia la capital en un Model T Ford. Es el torero más estupendo desde Manolete. On top of all Popocatépetl, all covered with flesh, the greatest of all matadores has been found and is on his way to fight in our bull ring. <laughs> Friendly folks. Zapatillas, pantalones, tirantes, faja, chaleco, chaquetilla, montera. Oh, oh, Halloween. This is nice. Matador? Hmm. 
bullfighter? A, a fighter of the bulls? Me? Oh, no! <laughs> Must be a dairy. ferocious fighting bull has been vanquished by a truly great matador. Never in the history of the bull fight has there been such a magnificent performance. A great sight for the turista, who besides his usual collection of curios, will take home a better understanding of matadors and brave bulls. No fishing, no swimming, no drinking, no fires, no going over to the invader if you go into that section, but don't do that either. And remember, don't molest the bears. And now have fun, 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 fun. Lots of fun. <laughs> and there's a tourist for each and every one of you. <laughs> oh, yes. Last year, we had one complaint of stealing. Shame. We won't mention any names, will we? <laughs> but if it happens this year, the supreme penalty. I expect you to make with the atmosphere and mix with the twist. That's a must. Okay, mix it up, boys. Mix it up. Oh, 
Clean, pick up this and this and this and that and this over here and this and this. Go over and get that. And go over and get.
into my heart now and forever and our love had its start not long ago we were gathering stars while a million guitars and a love song when I said I love you, as you did it, my heart said it too. T'was a moment like this. Do you remember it? And your eyes threw a kiss when they met mine. Now we own all the stars and a million guitars are still playing. <laughs> Darling, you are the song and you'll always belong, 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 belong to my heart. Somewhere within the crowded confines of the big city, there roams a lonesome man in need of companionship. But for every friendless man, there is always a dog, man's best friend. Fate, in its peculiar manner, brings these two together. A one-man dog and a one-dog man. What? Fifi. Bowser. Bowser. A mutual feeling of understanding springs up between them, held together by a common bond. Soon the puppy becomes accustomed to his new surroundings and makes himself at home in his master's house. Oh, I've got you! The out of doors is the best place to teach the dog his parlor tricks, and the best method is by illustration. He should be shown how to heal. Heal? How to sit up. Sit up? To roll over. Roll over? Lie down and point. Like this. Point! Dumb dog. When the pup has learned to obey these simple commands, he should be rewarded with a biscuit for his efforts. Take a bite, Bowser. Yow! A man and his dog, each for the other. Here, pal, shake hands. After months of training, the young pup has grown into a one-man dog. The proud master enjoys a leisurely stroll with his pet. My, what a handsome dog. Oh, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> heel, Bowser, heel. I said heel. Stop. Whoa, heel. <laughs> Roll over! Get up! Come on, roll over! Get up! Oh, 
There is nothing closer in affection than a man and his dog. Fortunately, the happy dog greets his master's return from a hard day's work. <laughs> ah, the comfort and companionship of dog and master. Sometimes the neighbors drop by for a friendly chat. Hey, Gates, your dog busted my fence. I'm gonna sue. Scared my chicken. You owe me twenty. Who's gonna pay for my wife? Pour up, my lord. Pay up or else. Eat my roof. I keep that dog home. The kindly master cannot count the cost in money for the privilege of owning a pet. <laughs> With a warm feeling of security, the master steps out for the evening. Good night, Bowser. Zippity doo, da zippity yay. My oh my, what a wonderful look. Bowser! Out! Get, 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 get! And stay there! Slightest noise is apt to arouse the watchful dog into instant action. Bowser! It's me! It's me, Bowser boy! Remember? Speak to me, Bowser! Ow! Doggedly, the pet protects his master's house, almost as if it were his very own. The dog... Mr. Duck, this is where you get off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
What a wonderful morning to stay in bed. Come in. Ah, uh, good morning, James. Ah, uh, yes, my breakfast. Mmm, very good. You may serve.
cream. <laughs> now, my good man, run to the corner and get me the Sunday paper. Here's a dime. Now, be careful and don't lose it. Smart dog. Why, he looks like a thoroughbred. Such poise. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Stand by, everybody, as we turn the calendar back 500 years and bring you the 123rd running of the Canterbury Tournament at Blunderstone Castle. The weather is clear, the turf is fast, and it looks as if all attendance records will be smashed to smithereens this afternoon. Yes, sirree. Red on plum pudding, plum pudding, dear. Get your program, dear folks. You can't do one night from another without a program. To the winner of this world-famous tournament today will go riches, honor, and glory, and the frail white delicate hand of the lovely Princess Esmeralda, fairest flower in all the kingdom. What a prize for stout-hearted knights to do and die for. And now we take you to the dressing room of the challenger, Sir Loinsteak. Fourteen points of brawn, muscle, and courage, blonde and blue-eyed, ready to pit his strength against the champion for the heavyweight cast-iron slugging title of the British Empire. And here we have the little man who ever since early morning has been preparing his night for the big day. Introducing Cedric, the loyal and humble servant who dreams of some afternoon when he too will become a knight and face death for the smile of a lovely princess. <sighs> but today Cedric's duty is to see to it that his master is completely overhauled. Valves ground, new piston rings, brakes relined, body simonized and a complete change of oil. <laughs> moment is drawing close now. The crowd is on his toes and yelling for action. And we go into final preparations for the big event. The all-important last-minute touches that may very well snatch victory from defeat. Uh-oh, hurry, Cedric, hurry. Get rid of it, stupid, anywhere, under the rug. You've no time to lose. Before you can say Jack Robbins and the two sturdy gladiators will be out there. Hurry up, Cedric. Slugging it out for the championship. The betting is four to one in favor of the champion, but the challenger is going in there with all the confidence in the world, and there may be an upset if Saloin State can turn the tables. It's only a matter of seconds now before the two armor-plated contestants meet face to face on the field of honor. The last minute preparation. But wait, folks. Something's gone wrong here. Saloin State is out, completely out. A cold night. There's been a slip-up, and it looks as though the tournament may be off. But there's still Cedric. Look here, Cedric. You're in the armor now. Fate has smiled upon you. Lucky stiff. This is your big chance. Just imagine you, Cedric, can be a hero and win the glory, the riches, and the honor, to say nothing of the fair hand of the Princess Esmeralda. Think of it, Cedric. The chance of a lifetime. And now, coming out on the field, that night of night, circumference, the champion. Old Iron Pants, they call him. Never lost his seat in combat, but many a gallant knight has gone down to defeat neath the hoofs of his trusty war horse. And here we have the challenger. It's the loyal Cedric doubling for Saloin State, willing to do or die for his master. Or could it be the fair Princess Esmeralda? <laughs> Looks like love at first sight. With an inspiration like this, how could anyone fail? Easy there, Cedric. Easy does it. And now the knights and horses are in the starting gate. They're all ready. Battle stations, visors down, lances set. Any minute now. Although circumference the champion is the odds-on favorite, ladies and gentlemen, anything can happen out here this afternoon, and probably will. The crowd is waiting for the starting signal. It's just a matter of seconds now. The fans are on their toes, and here they go! is going to the front. And here comes Cedric the challenger. Both boys are moving into the furious pace. It's going to be ghastly. They will be closer now. Cedric is on the rail. Here's the champion. They're coming up to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> it's all over. It's all over.
its circumference, the winner and still champion. Bravo. Bravo. But just a minute, folks. Hold your horses. What's this? Yes, it is. Believe it or not, little old Cedric is in there again. What a fighting heart. And now the champion sets himself for another charge. There's the wind-up, the pitch, and the champion connects. It's a line drive going over third base. No, a long foul ball into the left field bleachers. But little Cedric is right back in there again. It's a hot night we have out there this afternoon. But the champion is on his toes, too, and that's a mighty fistful of sword he has there. And this time he means business. He's going in for the kill. Poor little old Cedric. This really looks like the beginning of the end, folks. No night living could stand up under this powerhouse event. It may be the kid's last ride, but he's right in there pitching. And he connects. What a sock this little fella packs. And the champ rocks back on his heels. Little Cedric sure sprung a surprise that time. But the champion is splashing back now with a right and a left, a right and a left. He's making every blow count. One, two, three, blow! No holds barred in this battle. There's a smashing right, and Cedric loses his head for a moment. But now the champion takes one on the noggin. The champ is taking a little more time now. He's lost a little bit of his confidence. This challenger is no green buff. He moves in and let's fly with a whirlwind attack. A left, a right, a left, a right, right, left, right, left. The champ is throwing everything he's got at the Cedric now. What's holding this kid up? He can't take this bombardment much longer. Why doesn't somebody stop this order? It just don't seem human. It's unbearable. There ought to be a law. Why, the whole suit will have to be scrapped, including Cedric. But wait, the champion seems to be tiring. Those sledgehammer blows are losing some of their steam. Champ is breathing hard now. And again, we take you back inside with Seth. Let he cool this boy. But wait, something's happening out there. Let's have a look-see. Could it be that old Iron Pants is beginning to weaken? Yes, he reels in his saddle. And it looks like he's going down. Yes, he's down, he's down! And that wraps it up, folks. The winner and new champion, little old Seth. Well, that's the way it goes, folks. Chump one day, champ the next. What a day for a night, and what a night for a day. Yes. <laughs> 
watch out for some spirits.
to rise. The average man's life is controlled by the clock. It gets him to work on time, home on time, bed on time. Up, work, home, to bed. Up, work, home, This bed. same monotonous Up, pattern work. continues through the week. But Saturday night, ah, Saturday night, gay, laughing, mad, Saturday night. <laughs> when the average man lets loose, stays up late, and why do you do this, Mr. Average Man? Because tomorrow is Sunday, your day of rest. <laughs> ah, Sunday morning. No alarm clocks, no rushing. Complete relaxation. <laughs> Sleep. All right, Mommy. You know your father likes to sleep on Sunday. I'm sleeping. Anyone for tennis? <laughs> Softly sighing sounds of early morn. Hark, a new day is born. Sleep your life away. Now for that old Sunday morning paper. Yep, the coast's clear. Hi, Keith. Hello there, Mr. Keith. Morning. Hello, uh, Keith. Hi. Good Top of the morning. Yeah, good to see you, Keith. Hi, Keith. It's truly a day of rest, lounging around in your pajamas, unshaven, just plain old loafing. Cleaned up. I, I gotta shave. Come on, hurry up. Don't stand there. Get moving. Shake leg. Come on, I'll get going. Everybody ready? 
Well, well, this is a pleasant surprise. Oh, hello. Come on in. After a leisurely breakfast, you've got the whole day to yourself. To many, Sunday means tinkering with the car, puttering in the garden, making necessary repairs, or perhaps a little recreation. But to others, it's the day of rest. George, you promised to drive Junior to the beach. Come on, Daddy. Nothing doing. It's my day off, and I'm staying right here. Ah, the open road and a pleasant Sunday drive. <laughs> drive faster, Daddy! Stop it, Junior. Lay down, Bowser. Let that alone. Get your hands off of that. Come on, quit pushing. Move over. Stop. Lay off. Junior! Ooh. <laughs> Ah, at last, the beach. <coughs> all right, all right. Hey, here you are. <coughs> hey, hey, look at the nice rolling coaster. <laughs> oh, whoops! Hold on tight! <laughs> Junior! Come back here! Where'd they go? Junior, get out of there! What's the big... Mm. Well, how do you do? <laughs> Nix, ouch! Oh, no! Oh, no! Stop it! Oh, no! Oh, ouch! Nix! Son of a gun of a dog on things. <laughs> Junior! Junior! Come to Daddy! Oh. Oh. Wait till I get you! Yeah. Reluctantly, you leave the fun zone and hurry to beat the traffic home. <laughs> hmm. Sunday drivers. Truly the end of a perfect day of rest. I want to go home. But you can take it because there's always tomorrow. Happy Monday, when you start that wonderful, relaxing humdrum of that good old monotonous week, where you rest up for your day of rest.
church. Well, you're going to have plenty to answer for on your judgment day. Now lie down. under a steamroller, and then he left me flat. He's scared out of his wits. And every time a dog barks, <laughs> he throws a dozen fits. Watch him. We 
November 23rd. After an uneventful voyage, we sighted Africa, the dark continent, land of adventure. Africa, the unknown, black, foreboding, mysterious Africa. November 24th. We landed on the romantic Ivory Coast. Rounding up porters for our safari, we pushed off toward the interior. November 25th, safari across vast stretches of wastelands through the forest of Mubasa, up the slopes of Mount Mukakia, down the valley of the Umbambugi, over crocodile infested waters, onward, ever onward pushed our safari out onto the open veld. February 11th. <laughs> Suddenly, we reach the interior. Pitched camp near a water hole and was swallowed by the inky African night. During the night, our waterhole was visited by many strange and interesting animals. One, a superb specimen of the heart beast, obviously named because of the unusual design of his, uh, horns. <laughs> a handsome zebra also became thirsty. Another rare fellow was the spotted or laughing hyena. <laughs> then came a beautiful specimen of the warthog. And last but not least, a very rare and unusual species of... <laughs> I too became thirsty. After some difficulty, succeeded in quenching my thirst. February 12th. Ah, the African sunrise. At the crack of dawn, I leaped from my couch, ready for my morning plunge. All the world owes me a woman. 
refreshing bit, I returned to my tent and quickly dressed Friday the 13th. Accompanied by my number one boy, I set forth in search of the biggest game Africa had to offer. Suddenly, makes his home on the back of the black rhinoceros. <gasps> black rhinoceros! <laughs> this quaint little fellow pays for his room and board by warning his cumbersome companion of impending danger. Steady as my nerves are. Permit. Permit? Did I have a permit to shoot a rhino? It was either him or me. It was me. and started homeward, out across the open belt, pushed our safari, across crocodile infested waters, up the valley of the Umbambugi, down the slopes of Mount Macacchia, through the forest of Mubasa, back until we reached the ivory coastline. Nor did the ocean stop us as we sailed for far horizons, sailed into the tropic sunset. Thus we left this land of romance, with its beasts of belt and forest, left it for the other hunters. And believe me, they can have it. seem I used to be in business with that old duffer it all began many years ago when I was young and full of the old beeswax <laughs> I was ever looking for better opportunities ah here's one young <laughs> I 
had a hidden talent. Opportunity was not. <laughs> So began a beautiful friendship. We agreed to stick together. That night, he took me to his modest little cottage and fed me, too. Ah. While I tried to repay his kindness in some little way, I had the feeling that Mr. Duck was planning big things for us. And I was right. For the very next day, we were in business. See the one and only. She's lovely. Well, <laughs> they didn't stick around that job long. I'll never forget the day the fleet came in. All right, boys, to play up. <laughs> I made quite an impression. <laughs> The boss had an idea that was to be the turning point in our lives. We started with a three-spooler. Hello, hello, yes, hello. Soon we were in full production. Hello, what's that? By the time I finished the night and the dragon, <laughs> I was really dragging. I told the boss I needed a vacation in the country, maybe. That man was a genius. He brought the country to me. together was about to come between us. Well, sir, that was the end of our partnership. And the little missus and I have been happy all these years. Thanks, Frank. I've been getting all over for that. Oh, no, you don't. Not me. Uh-uh. I'm not going back with... Spike! 
Get in here! You no good worthless bum! What do you mean loafing around here all day with your no good friends? I cook and slave all day while you sit in that Well, what are you waiting for? Come on, let's get going! Let's go! argument or nothing. Understand? Cause anybody knows them old kibbered wagons look powerful slow creaking and groaning across them plains. But let me tell you about one of them wagon frames that sought a speed record back in uh, 48. Or was it 49? Ain't been busted yet. No siree. Not even by one of your dad blasted area planes. Now we were just leaving Nebraska. Going into Florida. Hold on there. Weren't Florida. Were, uh, Pennsylvania. Well, anyways, I was up ahead to scouting for engines on my old horse, Hamlet. <laughs> Called him Hamlet because he had a pretty bad case of stage fright. Well, we kept pushing west through New York, Buffalo, New York. When doggone my britches if and we ain't spotted by them there pesky redskins. gathered for a powwow. They was all of them there. A Blackfoot, an old Apache chief, yep, an old crazy horse, <laughs> and a Cleveland in Then come Big Chief, rain in the face.
Indians! We're really caught with a flat foot. Knocking them off like flies. <laughs> Another engine bit the dust. They threw everything at us but the kitchen sink. <clears throat> All of a sudden, we had come out of ammunition. Our goose sure was cooked. We was goners, dead ducks, wiped out, massacred. Hey, wait a minute. Whoa, hold on there. Why, just when we was about to give up, along come a tornado. A twisting and a turning and a swallowing up everything. Just like one of them uh, newfangled vacuum cleaners. Swallowed up every last one of them. Wagons and all. Well, partner, that old tornado just took us across them plains and mountains. Quicker than you could say Jack Robinson. <laughs> some of us settled in Oregon and Nevada and in California. And some of us went a little too far west. So long, strangers. Don't take no wooden engines. Sure, 
Let's tell him. Hey,